Thank you for joining us for this episode of Recipe Share, a program on AADL TV where we take a few minutes to talk about recipes in a featured category. Today's category is finger foods. I'm Katie, and as usual, I'm joined today by Elizabeth and Beth to tell us about their recipes. So Beth, tell us what you chose today. Okay, well, this time I made uh, some, what I would call homemade Cheez-Its. Um, they, the recipe is actually cheese straws, uh, Southern cheese straws. Um, and I realized I had, I had looked at Martha Stewart, it was two weeks in a row, but, but most of these recipes are the same. Um, it's just called for like six to eight ounces of shredded cheese, um, cheddar, but I believe you can use anything, cup and a half of flour and some dry mustard, cayenne pepper, black pepper, salt, and butter, softened, unsalted butter. Uh, stick of it, uh, process it. And then the, what, what makes them cheese straws is the way you roll them out and make them kind of roll them into long straws and then cut them up and also scrape them with fork tines. But I used uh, cookie cutters. And so, and I'll show you a picture here, cute shapes, just like I used uh, for the boards with little hearts and flowers. And they were quite a hit. I took some to work and they were like, a, they were a hit. They were like so fun to just grab one and slip it in your mouth. It was really tasty. And uh, I was actually going to make some more today just because it sounded so good. So I might, but I have other things I have to make too. So anyway, that was, uh, yeah, what I would, I would call them homemade Cheez-Its, but, um, but there's a trademark there. So <laughs> homemade cheese crackers. Sounds great. Did you yeah. um, bring any to your grandbabies? Of course. Seems like of that would be course. good. They would like that. Or yeah, she Olivia yeah. would. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and really way better for you than like packaged crackers. Way less salt. But yeah, well, yeah. I, I also like the fact that there's cayenne pepper in there. It sounds like you could make um, extra spicy if you wanted to. Okay, too. Yeah. I hadn't thought about doing that with cheese crackers before. So that's a great idea. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, how about you, Elizabeth? What did you make for finger food? Sure. So um, my recipe came from this cookbook. Um, you may have seen simply Julia, Julia Tertian. She has a few out. Um, this is her most recent. Um, I've really enjoyed this. I'm not, I actually wasn't familiar with her. I haven't read any of her other cookbooks, but I put this one on hold and I really enjoyed it. I've cooked a few things from it and it's, um, the subtitle is 110 easy recipes for healthy comfort food. And it is that it's easy, it's comforting. And, um, she incorporates healthy ingredients in ways that I really like. Um, so the recipe that I made, um, and this was interesting to me. So it's called zucchini, green olive and feta fritters. Um, and sh they look kind of like that, um, or they're supposed to. And I, when I first saw that, I didn't think of this as a finger food. Um, but sh the way that she makes it and suggests that you make it is, um, they're pretty small. And she said that she puts them out for an appetizer. Like if she has friends over with this dipping sauce and it's like super easy, you just grab one and like, dip it in and it's, that's it. So I said, okay. Um, and so I made them, um, I did not make them for guests. I just made them for my husband and I, um, so I actually did make them a little bigger than she suggested just cause I wanted to get a sense of them. And, um, this was a really interesting recipe. So as I was making it, I was like, this is not going to work and it looks bad. Um, but then it all came together and my first bite was delicious. So I'll just tell you how to do it. So first of all, you make a dipping sauce, which is half a cup of full fat plain yogurt, um, uh, half of a fresh lemon squeezed into it, 
um, a minced garlic clove and some kosher, kosher salt. Pretty easy, you just mix that together. And for the fritters, you have a quarter cup of all-purpose flour, a couple tablespoons of cornstarch, which I did not have, didn't use, seemed fine, um, half a teaspoon of baking powder, some salt. You mix that in a bowl, and then separately you grate two large zucchinis um, and uh, combine with a quarter cup of pitted green olives, roughly chopped, um, three quarters of a cup of crumbled feta cheese, and a large egg that was lightly beaten. Um, and then you can mix those up, combine the wet and dry ingredients, um, and stir it all up. Um, when I did this, it was pretty dry, so I added a second egg. Um, no big deal. And then basically, Julia says to drop tablespoonfuls into a hot pan with olive oil in it. Um, and then you let them kind of sizzle for three minutes on one side and then flip them over and let it cook for a couple minutes on the other. Comes out, that's it. Oh, you kind of flatten them a little bit into a pancake. Um, the mixture doesn't look, like I said, it doesn't look very good. It's just kind of a bland color. Um, it's a little like mushy. I was super sure that they weren't gonna stay together in the pan, um, uh, but they did. And like I said, I made them a bit bigger I because I, we were gonna actually eat them for dinner. Um, so I used several tablespoons and flattened them into little pancakes. Worked great. They were crispy, delicious. Um, I have a photo here of a couple of them on a plate with the sauce drizzled on. And um, I actually brought them to work the next day and ate a couple cold for lunch too. And that wasn't bad. Um, so it was really a surprise hit for me. And um, I would make them again. And I would make them the way she suggests, smaller and um, kind of arranged on a plate with the sauce just for people to dip and pop in their mouths. Um, so it was great. I would recommend it. Very cool. I like that cookbook too. I've checked that out before. It's really good, but somehow I missed that recipe because I never would have thought to put olives and feta into fritters, even though fritters and olives and feta are like two of my favorite things. I would have never thought to combine those. So that's really cool. Thank you. For yeah, sharing I was that. thinking awesome. that too. Yeah. The like green olives, you don't typically see in that fashion. I don't. Yeah. Um, but it sounds like it'd be really salty. I mean, and, but good. That yeah, salty. Yeah. It was um, super good. And I love olives. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And she said, like, uh, this is a great recipe for when you have a ton of zucchini in the summer. And I said to myself, yes, it is. So I'll be making this <laughs> this summer for sure. So, um, Katie, what did you make? All right. Well, so the recipe that I'm sharing today is from a website called Honey and Lime. And this recipe is for lemon fruit bruschetta. So I was really excited when I saw this recipe because I make tomato bruschetta like all summer long. It's a huge staple in my house, but I had never thought of making bruschetta with fruit. So I thought, what an interesting concept. Let's give it a shot. So um, basically you take your baguette and normally when I'm slicing my baguette for bruschetta, I slice it like diagonally. So you get an oval, like the biggest surface area you can for these, you actually want to cut them like straight. So you're just getting a little circular piece. So it's more of like a bite sized. So you do that, you brush the tops of the bruschetta with olive oil, put them on a pan and just put them under the broiler for a minute or two. Make sure you watch them because they can burn. And then, then you just pull those out and set them aside to cool. And then you make your cream cheese mixture, which is eight ounces of cream cheese, the juice and zest of one lemon, and then just a tablespoon of water. And you, <laughs> this says stir that together, but I used a hand mixer because, you know, cream cheese is pretty hard to stir even when you let it soften. So hand mix that up until it was combined. And that just takes a minute. And you just spread the cream cheese mixture onto the top of each baguette and you top it with fruit, a little drizzle of honey, and then some sliced basil. Um, and the fruit that they called for in this recipe was strawberries, blueberries, and mango. 
The first time I made this, I used strawberries, blueberries, and raspberries because that's what I had. I've got a little picture here that you can see. It's not the greatest picture because the color of the fruit is basically the color of the tray, but you can kind of tell what it looked like. But then the second time I made this, which was just recently, I made it just using blueberries as the fruit. You can see a picture of that, which looks a little bit nicer. And I also liked it better. I thought that the combination of blueberries, lemon, and basil was just such a nice little tidy flavor combination. I really, really loved it. I also really liked not having to cut up the fruit to put on top of the bruschetta. The blueberries are like already there. It makes it an even more simple recipe than it started. And I think tastier. I'll probably make it like that um, in the future, unless I've got some fruit to use up, which is another really great reason to make this recipe. So I'm going to definitely add this to the appetizer arsenal slash dessert arsenal. It could be either one. So yeah, I really liked it. That is such a great idea for, um, in my mind, like if for a brunch, like if you're, I was just, I brunch is on my mind because, um, as we're filming this, I'm doing a little Easter brunch for my family yeah. and, um, I'm like, wow, that would be such a great like appetizer before, you know, for, for, for a breakfast event. Um, it sounds super good. Totally. You know what else? Um, because Passover is coming starting tomorrow yeah tomorrow um and i don't always keep fully kosher but i really like how you could spread that on matzah and i was also thinking for yours elizabeth making the fritters with matzah meal uh instead of flour so i may get a little creative this time with with both of your recipes sounds yummy well that's great we're all very seasonally appropriate today. <laughs> yeah, it sounds really, really good, Katie. And and easy, you know? Yes. So easy if you make it before. It's the perfect thing to make before a big brunch because, you know, you don't have to focus on it. You can even make the cream cheese like the day before. And just spread it on. Take it, out, yeah. take it out a little bit beforehand to soften it so you can spread it. And then you'll be done in minutes. Yum. Also yep. thinking yep. about that as a spread on bagels, even like you could just set all that stuff out and yummy. Okay. <laughs> Got me thinking. All right. All right. Well, thank you everyone for watching recipe share and be sure to click the link below to look at the event page on AADL.org to find the recipes we talked about and to share your own in the comments. Join us next time when we will be talking about secret ingredient recipes. We're looking forward to seeing what you've been making. So thanks for sharing. Recipe share, recipe share, share a little recipe.